What is the main word that Ms. Primavera is trying to have you draw out of this? Rigor. Thank you. Can someone define what rigor means in education? Strength. Say it again, Joseph. Strength. Strength. So give us an example because you're, you're somewhat on the right track. Uh, like for rigor, it's the strength, it's how um, hard they work the students. Like, think. Okay, so effort has, has is one piece of it. What else? Yes, sir. Well, I was going to say, like, like motivation. Um, yeah, motivation. Motivation? Okay. How about a few other words? Martha. Uh, determination. Force and determination. Determination. Okay. So how many auto students? If you're an auto student, please raise your hand. Okay, great. We have a few of you. Tell me what's something very basic that you would do, you would expect to be able to do by the end of your freshman year. What's it? Take apart an engine. Take apart an engine. Okay. Now, for an auto student, taking apart an engine is low rigor. For, for myself, that's very high rigor. So that's good. So what would something you might do your junior or senior year, something that's more complex in auto? Put together a car. Go ahead. Wheel hub. Wheel hub. Um, wiring. wiring. Electrical wiring. Transmission. Right. So rigor here might start at something basic like an oil change, uh, rotating tires, balancing tires, and it may go to something more mechanical where you have uh, electrical systems involved and you have transmissions and wheel hubs. So that would be an example of rigor. So. One thing you should realize is CTE, career technical education, occurs in every high school in the country. But most students go in as an elective. They go in uh, one hour, maybe every other day, maybe once a week, and they might learn in their auto class some of the basics, oil change, tires, maybe some, some basic brake stuff. Here at the Connecticut Technical High School, our rigor is different, goes much deeper. You don't just stop at those things. Um, you, you spend, you know, two years basically in your trade and you go much deeper into all of the systems so that you are proficient and able to get some speed where we can talk about rigor. Some examples. Health deck. Health deck. Okay, so what's something very basic that you may do in your first couple of years? Uh, summarize <coughs> chapters inside the book that we do. Okay, what type of information would that be? That would be, it goes to ethics, to um, how to treat a patient. Okay, great. And how about something you might see at the, uh, what happens at the end of your junior year, for instance? We get our CNA certification. Right. Certified Nursing Assistant Certification, and that requires a test. And obviously you have to not only know the content, but you have to know skills, correct? Right. Excellent. Good. Thank you for the questions uh, that we hear. Question number two. Uh, in paragraph seven, Duncan states the mission of CTE will have to change. He goes on to explain the ways in which CTE must change. Can, can someone give us an example of what, what he meant by that, what the Secretary of Education meant by that? He's got to be more career ready and college ready while they're still in high school so that if they want to do either, they can just jump right in. Excellent, excellent. What do we mean by career ready? What are some examples? Yes, sir. Out, outstanding. Excellent professional. Professional. There was a later in um, later in uh, section 18, paragraph 18. There's a phrase there that describes what you guys just said. Can you find the phrase in paragraph 18? Career readiness. Inside, yep, career readiness. Oh, there's another phrase. All need a common core of skills. Skills, what kind of skills? Yes. Like English, uh, science, math. Right, and they refer to those as hard skills. What are the other set of skills? Soft skills. Soft skills, right? That a lot of times is your professionalism. <coughs> Can you communicate? Right? Some of the things you do, whether you're in culinary arts, you have to greet, you have to be able to respond to an adult. You have to be able to problem solve on your feet. Those are considered some of those soft skills. How about some other, a few other examples of soft skills? 
let's go back to the automotive folks. What do you have to do once you, you're working on the vehicle? Who do you have to call in most cases? The customer. The customer, right? And who else? The auto parts store. The auto parts store, right? Those are all skills that a lot of times we don't get unless you're in a career and technical education program. And those are very valuable skills. Those are what employers are looking for. Excellent. The mission of CTE has changed. So we heard a lot about soft skills. What was one of the other changes that Secretary uh, Duncan mentioned? And you guys even mentioned it. Joseph mentioned it. Um, what do you what do you hope to get before you leave here? What do you hope to earn? <coughs> you hope to get certified. Certified, right? Credentials. Culinary. Uh, what kind of credentials do you get when you leave here? Serve safe. Serve safe. Excellent. Um, automotive. What kind of credentials? A lot of them. Yeah. A lot of them. And what's the big term that describes them? Safety. Yeah. Safety. Okay, right. You all get safety. Excellent. What safety do you all get? OSHA. OSHA 10. Right? Every one of you get OSHA 10 before you leave here. How many of you are juniors? No juniors here? All right. What you should know is every single junior here earns a first aid CPR certification. Again, something to take away. Um, what, other, what other certificates in some of the other trades? Any manufacturing students? NIM certification, excellent. What else? Electronics, do you earn any certifications? A plus would be A plus certification some, in some cases? Anything else? Okay. One of the things that um, she said, in order to continue to receive funding, he said, he wanted two things to happen. One of them was um, for every student to be able to, that's really making me nervous, for every student uh, to be able to be successful in at least one year of post-secondary schooling without remediation. So meaning that each and every one of you could go to um, do a, after you graduate, do a year either at um, a community college or a university and be successful without having to have remediation in math or English. And the other goal, or the other thing he wanted, was um, to see a very high percentage of you after you graduate to be, um, to be holding a job in the field that you studied while you were in here. So if you were in carpentry while you were here, they want to see two years after you graduate, do you hold a job in that trade area? Because if you don't, then essentially what has happened? You wasted, okay, you could have wasted your time. Or, um, you know, and, and not to say that, you know, if you choose to pursue a four-year um, degree and you're using carpentry or whatever um, as something to fall back on, that's that's fine and that's not what they're talking about. So I asked um, my classes how feasible they thought that was. Do you think it's feasible? Do you think it's right for him to want all of you to do at least one year of post-secondary education after you leave high school? And do you think you, if you did do that, could you do it successfully? And the other question I asked all of my classes is, is how many of you plan to go into the field that you're studying right now? So if you could raise your hands, how many of you plan to go into the field that you're in right now? A good number of well, which is excellent. And so what do you guys think about um, the idea that he wants all of you going to at least one year of post-secondary education after high school? What do you think about that? Do you think that's good? Do you think that's bad? The biggest question is why not two so you can at least an associates. Okay, good. Why not two? So you can at least get an associates. Um, I know there are some uh, trades where you don't need that associates or, you, or they, maybe it's more hours toward a journeyman. I'm not really sure how that works, but um, how many of you think you shouldn't ever have to or you shouldn't ever have to go to any other education, any other school after you graduate high school and, and you really don't want to. Okay. 
why does he say that you should be able to do that? In order to get what? Better skills to get a better job. Right, that's what he says. He says, if, by getting that extra education, you're ensuring that you're going to get a good job. Successful. Successful, a good job. So what's a good job versus a bad job? What's that? How much you get paid or how much you like it. Okay, how much you get paid or how much you like it. A job where you make enough money where you can do what? Live. Live. <coughs> Live comfortably, pay your bills. How many of you plan to do more education once you graduate? All right, so Tanner said he thinks he can graduate with the skills that he needs to be an electrician, but he doesn't think that he would be successful in college. Okay. Why, Tanner? Are you not being given what you need here? Well, I think I'm given what I need. If it's something I'd want to do, I just want to do a good job after. So Tanner says he is being given what he needs. But... I think what Tanner is saying that he doesn't like to, yeah. he doesn't like school, he doesn't like <laughs> academics, he just wants to be an electrician, and that's fine. Go to a technical college. What's that? Could go to a technical college. Could go to a technical college. And do elect, as an electrician, um, do you have to do additional training when you leave here? Yes. You have to have a certain amount of hours. Yeah. Is there any book work associated with that? Depends if you work in the engineering or electronic generators. So the more education you have in the electrical field, mm -hmm. the higher your pay goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you get like high performance degrees? Like NHRA and stuff like that. High performance engines. <coughs> Any other shops? Degrees or certifications you can get to build on what you've learned here? With electrical, you start off with your apprenticeship and you can go for a journeyman's test. After a certain amount of time, you can take a test to become a master electrician, which is many years after postgrad. So it helps to have a better education after that. What about electronics? We've got a lot of electronics students. Mm -hmm. Should be noted that a lot of the electronic companies offer uh, as, as a benefit to their employees to continue on in education. They'll pay like 75 percent and if they graduate they'll pay the other 25 percent that they haven't had. So it sort of uh, uh, points to the need that the employers recognize that education is an ongoing thing. It should be continued and they're encouraging it. 